Did you know there is the right way to charge your MacBook to avoid battery wear out? And here is more, wiping your laptop's monitor is actually bad for it. Today I'm gonna show you how seemingly harmless actions can seriously damage your Mac without you realizing it. I myself was shocked by some of these facts, so fix your ears on the short list of what not to do to save your Mac. If you already own a MacBook or are thinking of getting one soon, do yourself a favor and hear me out, so that your laptop serves you for many years. Let's start with something that might not be obvious to everyone. How often do you find yourself using your MacBook in a bed or on a couch? Did you know that it's not a safe way to use your Mac? Most MacBooks, especially those prior to M1 MacBooks, are equipped with an active cooling system and when performing heavy tasks, the device can overclock its fans. And now picture this. You decide to do some work lying down, place your MacBook on your bed and get going at it comfortably. Unlike your laptop, it's likely that by placing your Mac on a soft surface, you block the air ducts of its cooling system. So. What now, you ask? This causes the components inside to heat up because the cooling system is not able to suck in enough air to cool down the components. As a result, the MacBook tries to speed up the cooling system in order to cool the components down. The cooling system in turn gets louder and when it realizes it can't cope with its task, it commands the CPU to throttle down to a lower frequency to prevent further overheating of the components. This doesn't happen when the MacBook is placed on a hard, flat surface like a table, its vents remain unobstructed and allow air to flow freely. Overheating can not only cause damage to the components of the device like CPU, but also a decrease in performance. The CPU will lower its maximum frequency in order to maintain an adequate temperature range. This process is called throttling. But is it the worst that can happen when you use your laptop in bed? Nope. There is another thing that can mess up your MacBook. Placed on a soft textile surface, it will likely collect more dust and lint than on a table. The accumulated dust makes it easier for the MacBook to overheat even when performing easy tasks. And the worst thing can happen, the cooling system may fail due to the large accumulation of dust inside. The owners of MacBook Air with a passive cooling system will enjoy the next part, because the cooling system is literally passive. MacBook Air is not vulnerable to overheating or collecting dust on a bed or a sofa because it can't suck anymore. That is, there will be no overheating until you overwork the software. In my experience, when the MacBook Air heats up, the bed heats up as well, in turn further heating up the MacBook Air. Sleeping with your Mac is also not a great idea. It can happen that you doze off into sleep after binge watching a series on your laptop in bed, and the next morning you find that you crushed your laptop. So either avoid watching movies in bed or get a special stand for that. Should you leave your MacBook in direct sunlight on a windowsill or in a car? I think you've already guessed that you shouldn't. Don't do that. Overheating your MacBook is pretty dangerous. Firstly, because again, this leads to overheating of your MacBook hardware and its failure. Secondly, some parts of your device may be left deformed from extremely high temperatures. Therefore, do not leave your MacBook in hot places in order to maintain its performance. So try to keep your MacBook in proper conditions. That is 50 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit for the duration of work. Otherwise, the battery may get damaged, which leads to quick overheating when it's hot or quickly losing charge when it's cold. If you have an old MacBook with an HDD, this tip is for you. If you frequently and aggressively swing your laptop around when you're walking or shake it angrily during an emotionally heightened episode, happens to the best of us, you risk damaging your hard drive. Strong vibrations don't do much harm to the solid state drives, SSDs that come with the latest MacBooks, but mechanical hard drives, HDDs, are quite vulnerable to them. Thus, if you don't want to lose the contents of your HDD, handle your MacBook carefully and don't subject it to aggressive shaking. Sooner or later, all MacBooks begin to turn the fans up, even at minimal task load, and make sounds similar to that of a jet engine roar. These cries for help mean that it might be time to clean the inside of the laptop from dust and other debris. If you've been avoiding doing that for years, then your cooling system might be housing dust species unknown to man at this point. If your MacBook is still under warranty, take it to a service center for cleaning. Otherwise, you can try and carry out the maintenance process yourself. For those who are too lazy to clean their room to the point where you have tumbleweeds of dust rolling around, your tech is likely to overheat faster and fail more often. The advice may seem obvious, but you need to clean your surroundings at least once a week. Wipe the table you use for work to get rid of dust and your MacBook will last 
much longer. But if you decide to clean your MacBook, it can suffer. The cause of most laptop breakdowns is debris, dust and liquids that get inside the computer, but sometimes you might harm your MacBook while cleaning it. Make sure to turn off your laptop before cleaning and try to use as little cleaning product as possible. Do not clean your laptop with a window spray or other harsh detergents. Do not spray liquid directly on the monitor or the keyboard. Instead, you should moisten a cloth with a small amount of the product and gently wipe the surfaces. However, be aware that the cleaning agent may penetrate the MacBook case and corrode its internal components. I also strongly recommend against cleaning your MacBook's display with detergents. This Canon will clean your screen of all sorts of contaminants at first, but soon after the oleophobic coating will peel off the screen. This, by the way, can also happen if you wipe the display too harshly or too often. Many people pick their laptop up by the lid when they're moving around, for instance. You really shouldn't do this. Firstly, this can damage the hinges that attach the top part of the laptop laptop to the bottom part. Secondly, when you do that, you squeeze the MacBook sensors with your fingers, risking turning the screen inoperable. In movies, after hacking into the mainframe, the hacker will fully slam the lid of the laptop in one sharp move. Although it looks cool on the screen in reality, closing your MacBook carelessly like that can ruin the hinges or shatter the screen. One of the common dangers is closing the lid without looking when you leave your earbuds on the keyboard. You're almost guaranteed to destroy the screen and probably crush the headphones. Please handle the lid with care. Do you carry your MacBook with one hand often? If yes, then I have some fun news for you. Holding a closed MacBook with one hand, wrapping your fingers around the top and bottom can put too much pressure on the case and the screen elements. People who use this type of grip will wonder where the dark spot on the screen came from. In the very place on the screen, they were clutching the laptop. Also, when you hold an open MacBook by one of its sides, its case can deform under its weight. Another bad habit often shown in films is when a character is done working on their laptop, slams the lid and casually throws the laptop on a table or bed. Impacts and collisions are dangerous both for the body of the device and for its components. That's why you shouldn't handle your MacBook rough or give it to small children. Remember, your MacBook is not a basketball, although some people think otherwise. Matt Nunnery, for example, set the world record for a laptop pro, launching it at 24.48 meters, but he hardly cared about its safety. Another totally common sight, people, including me, drinking coffee or other beverages while working on their laptop. This should never be done. One of the most common causes of technology breakdowns is when liquids seep into it. So keep your glasses of coffee, juices, and soda far away from your laptop. Please note that if your MacBook has been exposed to water, there is still a chance that it will remain in working order. Unfortunately, the same can be said about sugar-containing drinks that are almost guaranteed to mess up and oxidize the insides of the device. Food can harm your laptop just as well as drinks. If you're munching on something delicious over your MacBook, its keyboard and its components become littered with crumbs. This reduces the efficiency of the coolant system and in worst cases damages the mechanical parts. To keep your SSD healthy, do not fill it up completely. Free up at least 10 to 15 percent of its capacity. The drive will last longer and shouldn't slow down. In general, try to leave about half of the SSD empty and that way the SSD drive will work at its optimum speed. There are many myths on the web about how to extend the battery life of various devices. The most common of those goes like this. You must regularly drain the battery of your device to zero and then charge it again. This once was true for older batteries, but modern lithium-ion batteries are not subject to overcharging and they don't usually have these issues. When using the MacBook of any model, as well as other devices with lithium-ion batteries, it's much more important to remember about charging cycles. A cycle is the period of time for your device's battery to go from 100% to 0%. If you drain the battery in a day of work and the MacBook turned off, that's one cycle. If, for example, you discharge the device by 25% in four days, but put it to charge in the evening of the same day, this is also considered one cycle. It's also worth updating macOS to the latest version. Often updates include energy-saving add-ons to help extend the life of your Mac. Let's not dwell on this point for a long time because we recently made a whole separate video dedicated to the ways to properly charge a MacBook, and you can check it out. Smokers and vapors of all kinds of uh, substances 
Listen up. If you often enjoy smoking near your Mac. A couple of decades ago, CDs were at their peak. Even then, the service center specialists spoke about the direct harm of smoke to the DVD drives. The laser that reads and writes data would get covered with a layer of tar, which made it easy for dust to adhere to it. An opaque coating led to the complete inoperability of the CD drives. It was almost impossible to clean them at home, and not all repair service centers took on the most severe cases. But isn't that rudimentary tech anyway? Yes, but the core of the problem remains. Smoking near a computer is still unsafe for electronics. Through the ventilation system, smoke can reach even the well-hidden nooks of the MacBook, where it can settle down and then become covered with dust. The double layer of dirt contributes to the overheating and in some cases damage to the components. As a result, we get a decrease in the performance speed, eventually the MacBook breaks down. The odds of that happening are slim but never zero. Unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to fix that by blowing on it, you will need a professional cleaning. We've all seen how difficult it is to open new MacBook Pro models from iFixit. Surely you wouldn't want to do the same yourself on your own device. There have been many cases when Apple users were turned down warranty service when traces of tobacco tar were found inside their devices. Representatives of repair service centers will at best offer to repair it at your own expense, and it's perfectly legal. Sorry, but tar is not covered by warranty. So think about it the next time you light a cigarette in front of your favorite multi-thousand dollar MacBook. MacBooks equipped with only a few basic ports or lately with only a couple of Thunderbolts on board usually require a multi-port USB hub. Here is a hypothetical for you. You're looking at two cables on the shelf of an electronics store. One of them costs $15, the other is $100. Both are meant for the same function. Which one would you choose? The vast majority will probably take the first cable without too much thinking. This is happening all over the place. iPhone charging cables, power supplies, cases, and multi-port adapters. When you save on electronics, you usually get exactly what you paid for, plus the harsh reality. Off-brand USB-Cs, no matter how much they cost, serve poorly, aren't consistent at best, and will likely break down at first opportunity. This is even more true for any complex accessory, among them are USB-C multi-port adapters for MacBooks. I use them because I connect my 16-inch MacBook Pro to the large desktop monitor at work. There is currently plenty of knockoff multi-port hubs for Mac on the market, but among them, only a few can be considered reliable. So if you decide to use cheap multi-ports, the best case scenario, they break down. At worst, a MacBook port may burn out, and the cheap price you ended up paying for the multi-port won't be worth it. We recommend using original multi-port adapters from Apple or those of other reliable and trusted companies. But it's also worth remembering that those ones will obviously not be the cheapest. And since we got to talking about multi-ports, let's go back to the topic of charging your MacBook. Make sure to avoid using cheap off-brand power supplies and cables. Using non-branded cables and adapters can damage your MacBook. And I can already see these comments saying, oh, Apple is paying you to say this, dislike, shame on you, your gray subscribe button is red now. You know, I would have been extremely happy if Apple was sponsoring this video, but it's actually not true. All I'm saying is my experience, and I'm saying it like it is. That's it from me, take care of your MacBook, and if you enjoyed this one, then also go ahead and click on this one and this one, and see you in the next one.